How do you get taxed on your bonds? Are you a responsible citizen and pay your taxes on time? I'm sure you are and I can say that India is proud to have you as its citizen. You must be paying your taxes as per the slab that you fit in and you must be thinking once I make an investment, what kind of taxation will I be liable to? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Now taxation may not necessarily be the reason why you are planning to invest in a particular security. However, knowing the tax implications on your investment is important. Hey, I am Ria and I welcome you all to our knowledge series by SMES Discover where you can get smart about investing. Today we will understand how your investments are taxed. Now the first question I would ask you is, are you an Indian resident or an RI? I ask this question because both classes of citizens are taxed differently. Here's how it works. If you are an NRI, you will have to open an NRE and NRO bank account. I will help you understand what NRE and NRO accounts are. NRE account. This account is exempted from taxes in India and is utilized to park foreign earnings which have been taxed abroad. The income earned by NRI in India has to be transferred to the NRO account and this account is taxable at 30%. Now the point to understand here is that the foreign earnings available in the NRE account can be invested. However, the interest earned over this investment has to be credited to NRO account only. An NRI can invest through both NRO and NRE accounts on repatriable or non-repatriable basis respectively. Now you might ask what repatriable and non-repatriable mean. Let me help you understand. Repatriable basis means that funds in the accounts can be transferred back into the country of the residents. But for non-repatriable NRO account, the interest income that can be transferred is limited up to 1 million USD. Also, the DMAT account has to be linked to the NRO account. Now let's go to the taxes for Indian residents. Number one is the taxation on interest income. In simple words, the income interest earned, except for the tax-free bonds, would be taxed as per the applicable tax slabs. There are two tax regimes available to choose from, details of which will be talked about. Number one is the old regime which you can see on your screen. Here up to 5 lakhs of income, you don't have to pay any taxes and the tax rate goes up from 5% to 30% as the income increases. So for instance, your income is rupees 7 lakhs, then up to 5 lakhs, you will be taxed at 5% as shown on your screen and remaining rupee 2 lakhs will be taxed up to 20%. Number two is the new regime where the income slab starts from 3 lakhs and up to 7 lakhs, you don't have to pay any taxes. Here's how you will be taxed. Up to 3 lakhs, no tax. 3 to 6 lakhs, 5%. 6 to 9 lakhs, 10%. 9 lakhs to 12 lakhs, 15%. 12 lakhs to 15 lakhs, 20%. Above 15 lakhs, 30%. For senior citizens aged between 60 years to 80 years, there is a small tax benefit in the old regime. Here's how they will be taxed. Up to 3 lakhs, no tax. 3 lakhs to 5 lakhs, 5%. 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs, 20%. About 10 lakhs, 30%. And for the super senior citizens aged about 80 years, the tax slabs look even better. May you all live long. Here's how super senior citizens will be taxed. Up to 5 lakhs, no tax. 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs, 20% about 10 lakhs, 30%. From the financial year 2023, the taxpayers including NRIs and HUFs have an option to choose from old regime or new regime. To pay income tax at the lower rates as for the new tax regime on the condition that the taxpayer forego the rebate that they can earn if they choose old regime. Or to continue to pay taxes under the old regime, an investor can avail rebates and exemptions by staying in the old regime and paying tax at the existing higher rate. Curious to know the difference between the new and the old regime? Let's have a look. The tax rate in the new tax regime are the same for all the categories of individuals. That is individuals and HUFs, senior citizens and super senior citizens. Hence, no increased basic exemption limit benefit will be available in the new tax regime. Individuals with a net taxable income less than or equal to rupees 5 lakhs will be eligible for the tax rebate under the section 87A in the old tax regime. But in the new tax regime, no tax will be applicable up to an income of rupees 7 lakhs. Basic exemption limit for NRIs is up to rupees 2.5 lakhs, irrespective of the age. Now, there might be a surcharge as well, which basically is an additional tax levied on a tax, which is calculated on the payable tax and not payable on the income. 
For all categories, surcharge will be applicable as per the tax rate. 10% of surcharge if total income is between Rs 50 lakhs and Rs 1 crore. 15% of surcharge if total income is between 1 crore and Rs 2 crore. 25% of surcharge if the total income is between 2 crores and Rs 5 crores. 37% of surcharge if the total income exceeds Rs 5 crores. In the budget 2023, the highest surcharge of 37% has been reduced to 25% under the new tax regime, which will be applicable from 1st April 2023. Whoa, that was pure math, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next tax, also called tax deducted at source or TDS. Just as the employers deduct tax of the employees at the source, Similarly, the bond issuers deduct TDS on the interest income payable to the bondholders and is flat 10%. In the tax-free bonds, no TDS will be deducted on the interest on. The TDS for NRIs is at a standard rate of 30%, which is applicable on the interest income which is to be credited into the NRO account. Here, the TDS will be deducted with additional surcharge and education says, even if you have invested the funds from your NRE account. Next up is the capital gains. In simpler words, any sale of an asset resulting in a profit is considered as a capital gain. There are two types of capital gains and the duration for which you hold the bond will determine if it will be a long-term or a short-term capital gain. Here there is differentiation in case of listed bonds and zero coupon bonds. Gain will be long-term if it is held for a period of more than 12 months and is taxed at 10% without indexation and will be short term for a period of less than 12 months and it is taxed according to the slab rate. The indexation adjusts the purchase price of an asset in line with the inflation. Also, an SSE cannot take the benefit of the indexation for LTCG or the sale of bonds. In case of unlisted bonds, if the holding period exceeds 36 months, it is called long-term capital gains and if otherwise, it is called short-term capital gains. Important point to see here in case of unlisted bond is that SCCG from the sale of bonds are taxable according to the slab rate. LTCG from the sale bonds are taxable at 20% and the rates are only applicable if the bonds are sold before maturity. The tax-free bonds which are held to maturity are exempted from taxes. This can be a good option for those who are looking to save some money from the taxes. The tax implications on the capital gains for the NRIs are the same as the residents but without the benefits of indexation. Well, I hope this video gave you some super insights about how your income is taxed. Visit Smash.in and take the next step towards investing wisely. Stay tuned for many more exciting lessons coming your way. But before signing off, always remember, investments in debt securities are subject to market risks. Read all the offer-related documents carefully. For any queries on this module, please leave a comment below. See you in the next video.